What is up guys, my name is Meeps and welcome back for yet another League of Legends video. So today we're playing Malzazar. I think that's how you pronounce his name at least. I'm really, really bad with names. Those of you who have seen my previous videos already know this, but I'm really sorry if I slaughtered his name. Uh, feel free to make fun of me in the comment section if I completely slaughtered it or if I was right. Feel free to tell me because I don't know. I hope I was right. Alright. So today we're playing Malzazar, and Malzazar is a super cool champion and actually kind of a unique one. Um, personally, it's someone that, or a champion that I wouldn't re mind recommending for a brand new player. Uh, somebody might argue against me and uh, that's super fine, at the end of the day it's a subjective opinion. Um, but it's a really cool champion because his mechanics are pretty simple, however they can be used uh, such that they get a little harder and there's a pretty high skill cap on him But a lot of the things with this champion actually comes down to macro play. So how you play the map um, So this champion is is really really nice and the reason why I think it's really good for uh, for newer players as well is simply due to the reason that uh, as soon as you get through the first couple of levels he's gonna be very 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 easy to farm with and that's basically because Malsar, Malsasar is someone that you actually want to use your abilities just to shop the lane. Uh, we'll talk a bit about why this is um, in a moment. But first of all, let's go through his spells. So his very first spell, or his passive spell, is, uh, is what's called Void Shift. And Void Shift is a pretty cool one. What it does is actually gives you this uh, shield. We'll probably get it in a second here. Um, but it gives us this shield that absorbs 90% damage taken uh, while this shield is on and it, it gets removed after I think it's 0.25 seconds after you get hit by some damage from either a uh, champion or yeah from a champion sorry if you get hit by a champion then absorbs 90% which means you take 10% damage which is nothing um, so this is a really cool thing so we have this shield on then your traits are like it's much more forgiving to trade which is super cool and also it makes you immune to any uh, crowd control and this is very essential so this is basically a free like uh, what's it called um, banshee's veil it's basically what it is in in a spell so it's really 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 effective um, and a cool thing, so play around whenever you have this shield, you can uh, you can easily go for a trade uh, more on punish. You can see it just absorbed. I put my spell on her, and she did 10% of her auto attack damage on me, so it's worthy trade. Uh, next up, we have our Q, and our Q is kind of a weird one. Um, it's something that you'll have to just practice practice hitting, because um, the way it works is. A little odd. Um, the damage is not directly when I pop it. You can see th this does like this uh, thing with like outwards, um, and that thing is uh, whoop. Let's get that. Uh, and and once it does this rock the wrap thing, or I don't know what you call the warp thing outwards. Uh, that's where it deals damage and it silences the target. It actually does a really good chunk of damage. Uh, so don't underestimate it, and this uh, silence is extremely good. So it's something that also you really need to think about how you line it up. You can hit several targets at once with it, which makes it extremely good. Um, something else to notice, just while... Oh, didn't notice that one. Uh, just while we're here in the laning phase. Uh, I have the talent called Minion... Uh, what do you say? Dema Dematerializer. Uh, this one, you can use it offensively as well. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just quickly explain how, but... Yeah, maybe these talents change sometime in the future and you won't want to run it and... Then it doesn't really matter, but just for the sake of explanation... Uh, we'll, uh, we'll ex I'll explain that one as we get to our E, because that's where it becomes relevant, alright? Um... So, your next ability is uh, is called uh, your Void Link, so Void Swamp, I think it's called. I'm sorry if I uh, mispronounced it. I think it's Void Swamp, it's, uh, it's called. Um, and, oh, I don't know if something just happened. I was kind of explaining. It's called Void Swamp. And, uh, and what it does is that it summons these small minions. Uh, the number of minions you spawn is dependent on the number of stacks you have. So every time you cast a spell, you get a stack, which is very, very simple. So if you cast your E, you get a stack. 
If you cast your Q, you get a stack, and now we have three Voidlings. Um, the cool thing is they do a lot of... Oh, you need to be careful down here. So we have miss here. Um, the cool thing about these Voidlings is that uh, if they attack a minion... Uh, whoop. A, a normal minion that has E applied to it, or E ability, this... Uh, what's it called? Maleficent... Vision or something. If that's applied to a target, it actually does 300% damage uh, to that minion. But this only works on minions, and on epic monsters, it gives, I think it's 50% more damage. So it's it's a pretty neat little thing. It's a pretty neat feature, uh, which means that you can shove your lanes very, very quickly using these minions. Next up, we have Or E. And Or E is um, a very big part of Malzar and a very big part of how you play this champion. Um, Let's get that one, get control ward, and just get back up here. I think we'll just TP, just because I'm lazy. Um, but if this puts a dot onto a target, and for those of you not knowing what a dot is, it's something that does damage over time, kind of like an ignite. Um, so it puts this damage over time onto a target, and if this target dies, it, it, uh, it actually uh, infects the target closest to it. So this is very nice that if you're close or if the enemy champion is close to a minion and you pop this on a minion and that minion dies, then it infects the champion. So even though a champion is really playing defensively and trying to stay behind his minions, then you can actually hit it without risking too much. Um, so this is very, very, very cool. And another cool thing about this one... whoop. See if we can get this farm. I just need to. Eh. That was a really bad usage of my things. Uh, another cool thing of this is that um, that your E does this damage over time. It lasts four seconds and does a really good chunk of damage. But if you use your Q, your what's it called, the Call of the Void. If you use this on a target that has E applied, then it's gonna refresh the uh, your E. So that's a very, very, very cool feature, because it's going to do a ton of damage. Uh, let's see if we can roam up here. Uh, he's probably going to win, actually. Never mind. An enemy has been slain. Uh, I have miss here. There's a chance he's going up there. Okay. Let's brush that and go down here, see if we can do something. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. They're in trouble. I might be able to go down here and just finish something off. It is likely. I don't know if they have vision here. They don't. It's gonna be a free kill. I'm just gonna finish that guy off. Oh! That was, uh... Whoop. Get that silence on him. And nice. Alright, good job. Um... But as I was saying, your E is refreshed by your... What was it called? Call of the Void. And your ult, which is called Nether Grasp. So this is very nice, something you really gotta think about. This also means that, uh, imagine you're in a team fight, then actually popping your uh, E on one target, then making sure you hit that target with your Q, and then maybe apply your E to another target. That way you can actually have your E up and running on more than one target at a time. This is pretty hard, and that's what I mean. Like, there is some death to this champion that makes it harder. Um, and, and having to maintain these dots. But Malsasar does a lot of damage. Like, he can do a ton of damage. He's really, really freaking strong, even without his ult. But his ult is what he's m probably most known for. Uh, he's notorious for just clicking his R and getting a kill. And that is a big part of him. His R, let's just go through that one, is called Nether Grasp. And Nether Grasp does, as mentioned, a lot of damage. And uh, whenever you pop this spell, uh, then you are unable to move, but you're stunning your enemy, which means they can't do anything either. Um, while you're doing this channel, uh, while you're doing this channeling spell, then... Oh, whoop. I'm not gonna be able to go up there. Oh, whoop. Let's just go back. Um, while you're doing this channel, you deal a ton of damage, but you're immobilized because you're basically channeling. If you get stunned or anything, then you are going to get interrupted. So doing it while you have this void shift shield on is uh, is is a preferred. 
uh, to be honest. Um, so that's a very, very cool thing, and uh, it does a percentage of maximum health as damage, which means that uh, this spell is really good even against tanks. Like, it does an insane amount of damage, and it, if a lot of people actually don't know, but it does some AoE damage. Whenever you use the ult, I'll, I'll see if I can show you guys uh, the ult really quick, and we can use it on some target. Can we do this? Uh, ye. Help me bot, or kill him. Um, whenever you use this, uh, this spell, then it actually does damage, uh, in the, what you call the Null Zone. And the Null Zone... Whoop. It's gonna be a free kill. There we go. Nice. Not gonna go in for anything else, I just wanted the safe kill. And we're gonna back out. Oh, crap. I'm gonna pop the potion just in case. Okay, they are actually going all in here. I'm gonna have to stay in the back line. I'm just gonna be here as a precaution. And I'll back out here. I feel like they have it. Um, but whenever you use the spell, it, it makes what's called the Null Zone. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but it actually does AoE damage uh, to any target within the Null Zone. But the Null Zone is very, very small. It's basically... Um, can we show it? Is there... No, there's no way to show it. It's basically this size-ish <laughs> on the screen. I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, but... It does damage within this null zone, and it does uh, a percentage of max health as damage, which is really, really cool, and it resets the E. So let's talk about the combo, which combo you want to do on this champion. So, uh, your combo in general is going to be that you want to you wanna silence your target such that it can't respond. This means they can't flash, they can't do anything to respond except move. Um, and this is going to give you your first stack of your Void Swarm. Next up, you want to pop your E. So this is going to give you the maximum stacks of Void Swarm because you can max have two. Uh, or you can max have three minions, but you have one default. So you can max have two stacks. So you want to do Q, E. Then you want to do W so you get your Void Links into an R. Uh, and this is going to maximize your damage. And it's it, honestly, you're going to kill probably most squishies very, very easy just by doing so. Um, we're going to have to start looking and, uh, to roam. But the cool thing about Malsasar is he's he's so good at roaming. And the reason for this, and this is like when you start on playing him, just maybe try and just play him in lane, get used to him. But as you get better and uh, reach a point where you're like, I know this, I know how to play, um, then start roaming. And the way you roam with Malsasar is you pop your Q E W onto uh, the back minions. And then you just run away while they kill the minions for you. So he's super, super easy to roam with. Just because there is absolutely no freaking way they're going to be able to do anything about it. All right, that's over. So let's run down here. Uh, I think we need to help that bot lane a bit more. Because they're doing pretty bad at the moment. Or they're having a rough time. Not saying they're doing bad, but they're having a rough time. It's Even though the score is more or less equal, they're going to lose that turret probably now. Uh, let's start roaming down. Oh, we can actually do a flash kill on this guy. If you even have to flash. Alright, let's. I'm gonna give this guy a second. I'm not gonna push down there, because it seems like she's gonna back before I get there. Oh! Okay. He's gone. Alright, let's shove this lane and start looking for bot lane. And that's the cool thing. You see, I just pop my spells and just run away and you can roam and... That's a very, very cool thing with him. And then we want to look for our ult. And that's why you want to go TP on Malzasar as well. If you're a new, brand new player to him, then maybe start out with your uh, with Ignite. Just to make it easier to win lane. If you just start out and just want to do the laning phase and uh, just only play lane. Then start with that to learn the champion. And then uh, transist into uh, learning how to roam a lot. Because that's what you can do with him. You can just do this. And then you can run. I'm going to be like, okay, now I'm going to check out top lane or maybe now i'm gonna go in here i'm gonna put some mission onto their jungler see if i can catch him out i uh, will just have a look here if he's here okay there's a control ward let's remove this and then i'm gonna use this one to remove it from them because i feel like nasus knows where i am so he's staying on his turret so i'm gonna go back down make sure i don't lose too much cs we are in pretty good spot with cs considering the fact that we're constantly trying to roam we need to remove that ward but just want to 
put this on first. And um, so, yeah, what you want to do generally with this guy is you want to make sure that... Uh, oh, let's see if we can get this guy. I don't know if we can. She's running up here. I think she's probably backing. There's a good chance she is. If I was backing, I'll be right there. Probably. No. Yes, maybe. Okay. So she's gone. Never mind. Uh, another cool feature that I actually didn't explain that I wanted to. The thing I wanted to explain with the uh, minion the matralizer, I think that's what it's called, um, is that you can actually use it in early game in combination with your E. So this means that in early game, you don't really kill the minions that quickly. Um, so if you put your E onto this target, uh, like one of the back minions or something, and then just use your, your demolita or your, your minion spell thingy, uh, the matralizer, that's what it's called, uh, on it, then it's gonna die instantly and your enemy probably won't see the instant or the dematerializer uh, getting used. So that way it's a really really nice way of just applying your E to a champion because they don't notice that it instantly dies. So let's start roaming down here. I feel like something's gonna go down. Definitely is. We're gonna be here pretty fast. So if this guy can run a little bit. Oh, god dang. A little too late. Uh, but I'm just gonna shove the lane in then. I should have been out a little, a little sooner. I would have been fine. Right here, I know he's very, very low, so I can actually probably do like a flash kill on him. I don't want to be on the turret if possible, so I'm just gonna go for the turret instead. By take myself a little time here. And that is gonna deal. Okay, he's gonna go back now. Well, this is fine. We'll just take the turret instead. But as you guys see, I'm just oh wow. I did not expect that. Let's see if I can get help. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. It's very nice. And let's get that one down. So in general, what you want to do on Malsasaur as you combo is you want to Q, E, W, ult. Um, and if you're in a big team fight, then you want to see if you can get your E. Apply it to, uh, to, to more than one target and keep them up with your uh, Call of the Void. That's a very, very, very neat thing to do. We have way too much gold just because I'm too busy explaining. Um, so let's get, let's get that one and start moving up here. We can just TP. Um, so that's a very, very cool thing. Something we need to talk about is target prioritization on this guy. And this is where Malsasar is very, very often completely uh, misconceptualized, I guess. Uh, a lot of people always tell you, no, you need to ult the ADC. And uh, yeah, in a lot of cases, that might be true. Um, but it re it's actually really situational. If you want to play this guy on high rating, um, then it really comes down to what do you need. So the simple way of explaining this is that look at your ADC. If your ADC is doing amazing, then what you need to do is you need to use your ult to peel for him. Uh, and that means that you won't go for the ADC. You will probably be going for a bruiser or a tank that's trying to get to him or even an assassin. Um, that's what you want to use it for. So if your ADC is doing well, just click tab, look, okay, how's he doing right here? My ADC is kind of like, mm, right now. So maybe I'll be prioritizing Israel. It's going to be kind of a, a situational thing. I'll be seeing who's in the engage, if it's a full team fight and uh, how things are looking. But overall, it's mediocre. So right here, uh, peeling for him might actually be the right choice. Um, but if your ADC is behind, meaning that uh, he's losing badly or he's very far behind, then you always want to try and save your ult for their... Uh, whoop, let's see here. Come here. Ah, rip. Oh, this is actually not good. I need to get out of this, because if more people are coming, then I could be in a lot of trouble. All right. I know who he is. Gonna kill him and run. Whoop. Get that one off. And we need to run. Because I know a lot more people are coming here. Uh, that's a really neat thing as well. If you put your dot, and you'll also see this in a lot of other cases, if you put a dot onto Shago uh, and he clones, you can you can just click or look at which, uh, which, which clone has uh, the dot on it. And uh, that's the target you want to go for. So on a Shago, you pretty often want to use your E before your Q just to ensure that you know who's who. <laughs> um, very, very simple. 
Um, I'm gonna go in here and just take the blue buff. Uh, but yeah, back to the target prioritization. Uh, what you need to think about with Malzasar is just uh, what makes the most sense in terms of how your ADC is is, uh, is is doing. So look at your ADC, be like, okay, can this guy, how, how well is this guy doing? Uh, if I make sure that he doesn't die, can he kill uh, the rest of the team? Uh, and is he stronger than their ADC? And that's at the end of the day what matters with Malzasar. If he's doing worse, then you need to save your ult and maybe do flash ult plays onto their ADC. But if he's doing good, then you need to use your ult for whatever tries to get him. That is the biggest threat to him. Um, of course, as you get into late game, a lot of people might buy Quicksilver Sash. And this is something a lot of people uh, ask me about, what do I do? And the thing is, you just don't go for the target that has the QSS. Uh, that's sadly uh, the way it goes. Um, well, okay. So right here, I want to try and get my dot onto as many targets as possible. I'm holding on to my E for now. Just, oh, I actually didn't mean to hit that guy. Mm, I wanted to hit Israel. That was a misclick. All right, that was my fault. If I got, had Israel there, this would have looked totally different, hopefully. And maybe I would have died. Maybe, maybe it was, uh, it was too much. Um, right here, I think I'm gonna go, personally, I really like to run Leander's Torment, uh, cause it works very well with Crystal Scepter, since you get the slow, then you also get this extra dot damage. Um, but, a cool thing with Malzasar, and that's also a thing I, I see a lot, that people that play Malzasar don't do a lot of damage, and the reason for this is that they don't use their spells often enough, if that makes sense. It, it, it sounds really stupid, but what I mean with it is that Malzasar is actually a really, really, really high damage champion. Your Q hits AoE, which means if you line it up correctly, then you can actually, like, you don't have to do it like that. You can do it from the side as well. Try and see and make sure this line basically hits like a, a really a stun that it hits as many targets as possible. For one, it does a lot of damage. Uh, as you get Crystal Scepter, it slows and it silences. So this spell is insanely strong in late game. Like it is, it is absolutely devastating to the enemy team. And all of these spells has very, very low cooldown. Um, let's just go down here, see if we can do something. Oh, that's the wrong target. We are gonna get that kill. I'm just gonna go ahead, hold this guy. Oh, that might have been a bit over the edge. Might die here, actually. And we can turn on this guy. Just gonna run. Three, two, one. There we go. That was a close one. And I can silence her. Nice. All right, let's back out. So, so far we're 10 to 1. We're doing pretty well. We're very, very fit. Uh, I think we're gonna go build. See, are they building any magic resist at this point? Actually not. So, I don't think... We're gonna finish off that item. Then we're gonna start building into... I feel like we should build a death cap now. We could go, go, we could go like death cap. We could go something like... Um, hourglass would also be good. And uh, let's see, what else could we do that would make sense here? So, like, a Void Staff doesn't make much sense right now because they don't have a ton of magic resist. Of course, Nasus has a bit of natural magic resist as he pops his old, but he's 0 to 7, so it's definitely not worth it. Um, but yeah, with this guy, you just always want to try and target prioritize. You can kite a lot with him as you get a uh, Crystal Scepter. Then uh, you can cast your E onto people that are going to be slowed, and then... Don't underestimate casting your Q as well, because that one uh, silences them. And it just basically, you can do so much damage. So make sure you capitalize on this guy's damage. Get used to it. Figure out how you can uh, maximize the number of people you hit with your Q. If you have your E on somebody, think about using your Q for that target, such that you do the maximum number of, uh, of damage. And maybe even has your E active on more target than one. And make sure. Whoop. Make sure um, that you use, before you pop your W, then you have two stacks of your Void Swarms, because that's going to enable you to get your minions, and they do so much damage. It is, like, it is so underrated just how good these are. So, whoop, let's see. 
get these things down. And there's a long range in this one. So, so far you can see, like, we're a huge threat to their team. Like, in an insane threat. And there's so long range on this shit. Whoop. And pretty often a good thing with Malsasar as well is to, uh, to catch people out. And what I mean with catch people out is if you get the chance to ult somebody um, and they're out of position, then just punish them. It's a really easy thing to do. Right here, we can just punish this guy. We actually don't have to ult, but ah, he's gonna survive. All right, fair enough. I could have used my ult there and probably should have, but I was a bit busy explaining. But early game, so let's just break it down real quick what you wanna do. Uh, early game, you wanna pop your, uh, or you wanna roam a lot, try and see if you can roam other lanes, help out the other guys, uh, cause you can sharpen your lane real quick by just casting your Q, Q, whoa. Uh, oh, that almost killed me. Um, by casting your Q, E, W onto the back minions and just shove the lane while you roam around. And you basically get all your farm, so it's a very, very easy way to uh, have a lot of farm while also applying a lot of pressure to other lanes. Of course, make sure you put down your wards. I've been a bit bad at it right now because I am super focused on trying to explain the champion. But make sure you use your uh, wards. Uh, and put them some useful places. Just don't just pop them randomly. Um, and make sure they, they they give you some information. So right now you can just see overall we're doing very well. Uh, we need to try and figure out how to push some more object objectives before uh, the game goes a lot further. Because we're uh, we're in a spot where we're really really far ahead. Uh, like on Malsasar right now, we we're dealing so much damage, so we can we can tear a lot of their team apart very very easily. And I'm just looking for a spill on Zaga. You can just see he even flashes just from the fact that he sees my Q coming in. That's gonna be a free kill. So this is why I mean catch people out when they don't expect it. I'm gonna pop my minions. That's gonna give us. Oh, yeah. I wanted them to attack turret, but since I had an auto attack, it didn't choose to do so. Um, but yeah, just pop a Q here as well, just to get more minions. And we're gonna start pushing. We have a fight going on behind us. We're gonna try and help down here. And I'm gonna get my Q up there. He's gonna die. We're, we're just gonna keep applying all this pressure right now. We're doing very, very well. And also, one thing that's really good to note on uh, Malzasar is that uh, you can actually against a lot of... Oh, that's gonna be a kill there. On Malzasar, you can actually use your... Uh, what? That's also gonna be a kill. There we go. Didn't he die? Yes, okay, nice. Just kill this guy. Okay, he might actually survive that. Alright, but he had to use everything, that's fine. Very much worth it. I'm pretty low here. I'm gonna back and TP. We can just take their blue buff on the way. So let's just remove that objective as well and then TP back. They have three people dead right now. Maybe I should just shove this, just so the minions... I'm just gonna throw a Q in there. I should shove that. Put a ward down here, and I want this, and then I'm gonna TP up to that this turret afterwards. Should I just help real quick with uh, Drake? I feel like we should. I'll take this, and a cool thing is that Malsasar shield actually uh, enables you to pick these things up without getting slowed. So remember that when you're running back and forth. Uh, oh, we have somebody coming down here. I don't have my ult ready yet. I'm kind of looking for him. So, I'm a little bit in doubt with Fusu. I think that's the one. It was. Nice. And that's gonna be that guy. I'm gonna back. I will TP. It's right here. I'm gonna back out. I'm gonna get that one. And I think they, they have a little bit of magic resist now. So, we're gonna start building a Void Staff. There we go. How much are we missing? Alright, we're missing a bit. And TP. I'm actually just gonna buy the potion, just because I feel like we're gonna finish the game now. Uh, probably, so I might as well just maximize my damage. So, let's get this. Alright, let's make sure we kite these guys. So, use that. There we go. Keep silencing this guy. 
Gonna get Nasus down here. I'm probably gonna get stunned. Yep. And that's gonna be a lot of damage into that one. Ooh. If I had flashed there, I would have flashed left side and then ulted Israel. But we we got close. I really wanted to save my ult right there for Israel just because I felt like he was the target to get down. Uh, right there. And I was in no risk from the others. That stun by Morgana kind of made things a little rough, but overall it kind of showed. So every time trying to think about how to use your Q or your uh, your ult. Right now, if you look at the enemy team, let's see, none of them have built a, um, what's it called, a, a Quicksilver Sash at this point. So, any of these targets are very valuable for us. We can go for any one of them if we feel like it. Uh, and honestly, the, the ones that are essential for us is this Israel. He's 17 kills, so he's a lot ahead of Lucian. So, that's the one we want to hold on to our ult for. Um... Because looking at the rest of them, they're having a really rough time. So in a game like this one, Israel is your target to use old on. So if you have save your flash as well, then you can do flash plays onto this guy. Um, but yeah, overall, just this champion is so much fun to play. He is really a macro champion, which means you got to think about the whole picture uh, and think about okay, if they buy QSS, don't go for the target with QSS. Go for the target that doesn't have QSS, unless of course they've already used it on another CC. Then you can go for that target because it suddenly becomes a non-QS target, if that makes sense. Um, so really think about that as well. Alright, let's go up here. He's gonna help out. I'm barely gonna do anything here. But it is gonna give us what we need. So... I'm gonna be able to slow that guy. And that should be... Ah, uh, she's dashing. Alright. Because uh, otherwise I would be able to catch up to her. So right here we are... They are looking at a uh, <laughs> certain death. Uh, most likely. This is gonna be very, very, very difficult for them. Oh, what? So, right here. I know the right one. Oh, I'm gonna- Oh, I'm gonna be trouble. That was very, very dangerous. It's right here. I'm out of range. It's, oh, flash. All right. That, was, ooh, that is a good, good comeback. This is kind of unexpected. But that fight was really, really rough for us. But we got initialized on- Oh, there we go, Lucian. All right, he's gonna die, though. He's not gonna be able to duel that guy. Alright, let's get that one going. And now we're actually full itemized. We are... We're devastating to them. So let's make sure that we finish this game now. Uh, group as 5 And push bot. That way they have to... Uh, have... Have to have one guy pushing minions. But yeah, we were in a 4v5 back, I think. Why fight if I went back? Yeah. Somebody... I, I didn't even notice that he went back. I was too concentrated on uh, <laughs> talking but i hope this kind of gives you an impression of how you can play this guy uh for mid to late game team fights make sure you constantly look at like click tap look okay so who's the, my targets right now this target for us is israel unless we're forced by shaco like right there shaco forced our hand by uh by basically bursting us down uh, so that that can talk a little bit about maybe my misposition or the fact that uh, that or illusion wasn't there and for that reason um, For that reason it, it wasn't really I was the only other threat uh, And that's something you got to think about of course don't get <laughs> Don't get outnumbered. Uh, that's not a good thing So right here, I'm gonna I'm trying to again just steal this one Thank you can catch him on the- oh! I can't believe that happened. My bad. <laughs> Alright, I'm kind of throwing right now, but we'll get back into it. As long as uh, they don't finish the game right here, I'm uh, pretty sure we can, uh, we can do this. Oh, but this is really bad. This is actually a moment where I should get myself an hourglass. I'm considering... Let's see, what do they have? They have a bit of magic resist. At this point, we maybe we should consider selling the Leandres uh, to get an hourglass. But we won't have enough at this point. Like, we don't have enough gold if we sell it. Um, but that could be the only option. 
I think it might be because we kind of we we're they are starting to build a lot of magic assist, so we really need the the spell pen. Uh, I need the movement speed as well if I'm gonna be able to catch this Israel. So that's not an option either. And the rest of my items right now is very very important to me. So we might have to sell this. How much does he give it? Two thousand one hundred seventy on top of the other thing. It's actually gonna be enough. All right, let's sell this. Let's get ourselves an hourglass, because that's the one that's going to make the difference here. That I can pop hourglass if Shaco attacks me or Morgana does that. So, I'm not going to make that mistake once again. I thought she was going to keep running up the corner here. And the thing with uh, Malsasar on this corner is that if somebody tries to flee for you, from you this way, then you can actually, from here, you can reach over here with your Q. Which means that it's inevitable that you're going to hit them. Oh, let's make sure that uh, this guy's safe. Right now, this hourglass, I feel like that is probably gonna uh, gonna change everything for us now. I feel like oh. Let's try and find our way up here. Uh, God dang it, man! <laughs> okay, so things are really turning. The other way, uh, or Yi is for some reason split pushing, which makes this kind of weird. 40 to 50 seconds till we spawn. This might be a good split push. If he can get all the inhibs down, then it might be worth it actually. Because they're, they're, they're losing a lot of time soon, I'll be back up. So this might actually be really good. This might be a good split push, I'm not, I'm not even kidding you. Even though it might also have killed us, this is might be an... All or nothing play. Oh, going for that engage might be really dangerous. But he's gonna succeed. Nice, 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 nice. And I'm gonna be up in 20 seconds. We have Lona up in two. All right, he needs to get the other in hips. Going for this is stupid. He should go. He should go for the in hips because he's not gonna be able to finish. No way. No way. Ward, I can TP. If he can ward, then I can go help him. Okay, he's not going to. Alright, he's gonna get two in hips, that's gonna be fine. At least it's something. Uh, we gotta think about the, uh... The Baron now. Shade goes up there, and this is where... Hmm... They're gonna start it. And I need to go up here, try and be a threat to them without dying. I don't have flash, so... Oh god. Can't really do much here. Except I can go back and forth with my Q because I don't range them. Alright, not worth it anymore. Not worth it. They are already Oh dude. I'm gonna ult him, make sure we shut that guy down. There was a chance that he would die anyway, but it was very important that we got him down there. I think for now they have Israel down, we have that coming in, but we have Let's see, who's TPing? Narcissist. We know... That guy's gonna be dead. Oh, this is gonna be the end of it. But yeah, right here, we know this guy's the threat. This guy's been doing really well there, uh, Israel. 24 seconds. Whoop. Ah, let's get that guy. Whoop. Hourglass. I'm probably gonna be dead here. But I might be able to take that guy with me. Uh, would have been nice if Lucian just helped me out real quick. Oh, really? Oh, he lost that fight. Are you kidding me? Wow. Oh, this is really close. <laughs> I am not even kidding you. This is a very, very exciting game. Um, so, 40 seconds till we spawn. This has 1 HP. Not even kidding you. If they have a TP... Oh, they don't. He just used it. He just used it to get down here. I'm amazed by the fact that... Because, or uh, you won before versus Nasus, but this time you lost. I just, I don't know, I didn't even, didn't even look down there because I expected him to win. Um, what, right here, I think I'm going to do something. I'm just going to sell that just for a second to buy this. Uh, so I can put a control ward here just in case. Even though they don't have TP ready, I, I just want to make sure that... 
we have something down here. Also, they might misclick it. <laughs> it's a very tiny hope, but... Let's get that and uh, get this one. We need to be careful because uh, potentially Shaco could backdoor. Oh, they're actually... Actually, I'm, I'm gonna go in here because I need to stop him. I, I'm one of the only ones that can really stop them because I have my ult. I will cover base. And I have TP. So if I see all three people up there, they don't have their TP, then I can TP. But yeah, we really need to end it, but we need me. There are three people. All right, they're all up. They're all up here. I'm gonna come up here and let's just end. We got this. Guys, we got- I'm gonna flash play onto this Israel, that's our objective now. He used his jump. So my objective here is to look for that Israel. That's all it is. I'm gonna be able to do a lot of damage to him, then they will end it. So, we at least occupied him. GG, that was really freaking close. Um, so this is- of course, not a perfect game by me, and uh, not in any way, but I hope that it kind of explained how to play uh, Malsasar and uh, kind of my thought process, the rotation on him, what he spells does, because a lot of people actually don't know that your Q and your R reset your E, it's very important, um, and how the shield works and everything. So I really hope that this gave you an overall idea of how to play Malsasar, and uh, yeah. I, I really hope you enjoyed it and found it somewhat edu educational or maybe it's just a little bit funny or <laughs> entertaining because uh, if, if it was that as well that would be perfect that's what I'm going for uh, I have a huge passion for games people and humor so I hope that uh, some of that was ref reflected in this video and you guys uh, somewhat enjoyed what you saw um, I'm in no way a pro player. I'm above average. Uh, I feel like I know what I'm talking about uh, Of course there are players out there that are better at these champs than I am But this is just for the beginner or maybe the mediocre to intermediate that that Either needs to learn the champion or maybe played the champion for a while But not really feel like feel like they need a new uh, new what, what do you say? Uh, some new ideas of how you could play him differently than what they do or maybe some input or tips or tricks so i hope this is something it gave you and gave you an overall idea of Malsasar and if it's a champion for you maybe if it's someone you want to want to go pick up for me he's super fun because uh, he's very macro based very he, he teaches you a lot about how to play together as a team think about your team and not just think about yourself um, so yeah, I hope you found this one entertaining and, uh, and educational and learned something. Uh, if you did, then make sure to smash that like button. And if you aren't already, then I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe. It really means the world to me. It shows me that you guys really appreciate the content that I make and you want to see more of it, which means I'm going to do a ton more. Uh, the amount of support we've gotten lately have been absolutely like mind-blowing. Um, so thank you guys. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, a little extra thing is that we actually got a accepted for YouTube's membership program. So if you really, really, really want to show you extra support, this is nothing that people have to do or feel forced to, uh, but then you can actually uh, click the join button underneath and uh, and get yourself a membership. You get a cool Mips logo whenever you write a comment. Um, some of the bigger uh, um, memberships even give you uh, a, a very cool rank it gives you the highest one gives you the elite rank on our discord server and everything so yeah there's uh, and get onto my youth or my league friend list and everything so there are some cool things down there but it's totally voluntarily uh, it's just if you want to support uh, support my youtube channel and my dream then uh, feel free to do that if it's something you like but yeah Make sure you guys are subscribed. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, but that is going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, stay awesome, have fun, and take it easy, guys.